intro, so I don't want to mess it up. Okay? You guys ready for your headliner? And I quote, <laughs> your next comedian, one zero, one zero 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 Other than being a self-proclaimed scientist, I'm also the manager here, so uh, Woo! Yeah! It's kind of big deal. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and get out of work mode, relax a little bit. Ah, uh, that's better. I feel much more relaxed. Uh, I wore the, the Star Wars tie tonight, I forgot about it. How about the Trekkies being here? Yes. Uh, a friend of mine requests that I sing the, the song to Star Wars. So, uh, I'm not a good singer, but here we go. Haruata! <laughs> Simba! <laughs> I am your father. Right, singer? Uh, so, I want to thank you guys all for coming out to the periodic table of comedy. I started this show so people would understand my jokes. So, <laughs> I appreciate all you intelligent people coming. It's wonderful. Uh, I'm a big proponent of the environment, and I gotta tell you this little story. I was in the uh, Bible Belt last week, and uh, every day I was there in the country, uh, they had ozone alerts in a city that does not believe in climate change. <laughs> it was very, it was, it's like, oh, we'll just pray harder. It's like, eh. <laughs> don't you understand what? <laughs> I, don't, I personally, I don't get that. You know, it, it's obviously man-made because people say, oh, it's happened before and there wasn't cars. Well, yeah, but when it happened before, a super volcano had to explode for like a thousand years. <laughs> and we've done that in a matter of 200 years. So let's do the math. Uh, so I'm a big proponent of the environment and that led me to do something incredibly stupid so I want to share it with you guys, so you don't make my mistake. Uh, I decided to give up my car. <laughs> it's dumb. <laughs> oh, nobody told me I'd have to take public transportation. <laughs> oh, that is the worst. Anybody take public transportation here? Oh, there's a few. That's so weird. <laughs> oh, I hate it. Do you hate it? Yeah, I hate it. I hate it so much. I think they only put out schedules just to fuck with me, you know? Like, the 3.30 bus is never there at 3.30. The only bus there is the 2.15 bus, which is just weird. Oh, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I do. I like, sometimes when I see terrorists blow up a bus, I get happy for a second. You know? I like, kill that bus. <laughs> they have TVs on the bus. you think that would be cool. But all they do is play commercials for the bus. <laughs> It's like, go fast, go easy, go metro. I'm already on the bus, stop lying to me. <laughs> it is none of those things. Oh, I hate it. I hate riding the bus, I really do. Uh, they say it's clean, it's not really that clean. Like the other day, the bus rolls up and it says, oh, LA Metro, the cleanest bus system in America. And they pull up and the bus driver starts kicking trash out the door onto the sidewalk. <laughs> like right below the side, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> You're gonna make me get a car back, you jackass. <laughs> oh, I hate that. I do. And it's very unsafe, the bus. Because all you, you're just surrounded by metal, no seatbelts. All right, well, there's one seatbelt on the bus, and the guy in the wheelchair gets it, which I find completely unfair. I have legs, they work. You know what I'm saying? And, no, don't get me wrong, the guy in the wheelchair should get one too, but I'm just saying me, or me. Everybody should get one. What happened to click it or ticket? That's all I'm saying. I asked the cop about that. I'm like, why don't buses have seatbelts? Click it or ticket. And he goes, oh, well, you guys are poor, so you don't really matter. <laughs> That's a valid theory. <laughs> uh, a little tip, if you ever have to ride the bus, what I do is I carry a bottle of water with me and I will pour it on the seat next to me. <laughs> so you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> so if somebody tries to sit next to me, I go, oh no, I think somebody peed there. You might not want to sit there. Now, this will backfire, 
because the guy that does pee on himself won't care. <laughs> and so that will be the guy that sits next to you. From what I found out. It was a horrible experience. Oh, I hate that. I hate this stupid bus. I really do. I hate it. Now there's a couple good things about riding the bus. You get to meet interesting people. Like there are bus token dealers out there. I don't know if anybody realizes this. They'll, they'll always come around the bus stop and they act like they're doing something shady. I don't know if it's shady or not, but they always act like they're super low-down dealers or something. They're like, psst, hey buddy, you wanna buy a bus token for a dollar? I'm like, yeah, why are we whispering? Give me a bus token. Okay. <laughs> Saves me 50 cents, let's do this. It's, it's, always, it's weird, and I, I wonder if they're like, Gateways, like like drugs, like was last week was he saying tokens at Chuck E. Cheese or something? I'm not, I'm not, it's so weird. There's uh, imaginary people on the bus, you get to meet them. <laughs> now the weird thing about imaginary people is they are always arguing with a homeless guy. <laughs> I don't get that. Like not once do they have a nice conversation and that is odd. Of me. And so I've come to this theory that imaginary people are assholes. I mean, not one, not one nice conversation have I ever. I've never heard. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful day. So, you like this shirt? I got from Nordstrom's. I don't know, rack out of the dumpster. You know. It's so off. And I'm not racist against imaginary people. You know, I'm not a imaginarist, if you will. I just don't think they should be picking on us real people. If you don't like it, get on an imaginary bus, you know? Let's start the real bus. Let's do it. So what I will do is I will physically remove the imaginary guy off of the bus. I will go up to the homeless guy and be like, excuse me, sir, is this guy bothering you? Now everybody on the bus is like, great, there's two crazy people on the bus. And I'll take them off. The best part about it, the homeless guy will say sh will, will say thank you and then shut up for the rest of the trip. <laughs> I mean, really, it's a beautiful thing, honestly. It's great. So, really, if you meet anybody with schizophrenia, play along with them. It's a good time. That's all I'm saying. It's fun. Uh, I don't do a lot of dating, because I ride the bus, obviously. <laughs> I don't. It's, it's odd, you know. It's just too many numbers, honestly. You know, I don't know if 224 is her birthday, the bus I'm supposed to take, I don't know. I can't keep all that straight. Plus, what if she called me for one of those late night booty calls? You know, okay. She's like, hey, Will, I'm drunk, come over. I'm like, all right, well, it's 2 o'clock. I should be there by 8. <laughs> Still gonna be drunk. So I bring something with me. What's up? I'll get it from the homeless guy. I don't. I don't do a lot of dating. People find that odd. They find that weird. They're like, oh, there's somebody out there for everybody, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm not really looking, so I don't care. I, I just, I don't really get into the whole dating thing. It's weird. And people think, you know, that somebody long ago crushed my heart. And that's not true. Somebody long ago crushed my fantasy. I now live in the real world. <laughs> <It's real. laughs> so I just stay away from all that. Sense. People are always hard on the homeless. I'm not. I, I like the homeless. I try to help them out every chance I get. I give them receipt books. It's, it's, it's easier to donate if you can get a receipt back than it's tax deductible. Red Cross does it. Write them out, buddy. I've come up with this initiative. I think we should uh, combine homeless shelters with recycling centers. You know, save them a trip. You know, <laughs> work from home, so to speak. <laughs> we can call them recycling shelters. It'd be, it'd be fun. Help them out. That's all I'm saying. I'm always walking everywhere. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah. As a, as a self-proclaimed scientist, I'm not an actual scientist. I use science as my religion, which people find weird. Uh, I have a theoretical degree. <laughs> In theory, I have a degree. So I'm on the Discovery Channel. So, you guys watch this guy? I love the Discovery Channel. The science Channel, all that shit. I'm all over that. Uh, I don't know where I was going with this. Oh yeah! So I have a message for America, because I keep watching the news. And they keep telling me that America is divided on this whole gay marriage thing. And I just want to come out as a straight guy and say, who really gives a fuck? <laughs> I was like, who cares? I don't care. 
I mean, I hate the arguments that they have with like, oh, marriage is so sacred. Marriage isn't sacred, all right? Marriage was invented as a way for dudes to sell their daughters. That's, <laughs> that's why we invented it. <laughs> Nothing sacred there. And then it kind of evolved into a way for women to steal half of their husband's shit. So. <laughs> Well, not safe. You know, not safe. It's just, oh, and then my favorite argument, this is my favorite one, is uh, that gay marriage is a gateway commitment to marrying animals. <laughs> and now I kind of intelligize that uh, argument up. It's usually like, oh, they'll marry animals and stuff. Uh, being a little bit smarter. And once again, I say, uh, who gives a fuck? <laughs> if Cletus wants to marry that goat to clear his conscience, he's been fucking it for the past four years, don't care. I don't care. Anybody can marry whoever they want. That's what I say. I don't care. Personally, if you ask me, you're like, Will, don't you think marrying animals is gross? Uh, yeah, of course I do. I'm a regular person. That's gross. But it, it's all where you draw the line. I personally think uh, marriage is gross. <laughs> no, I think it's a ridiculous institution. That's why we call it an institution. <laughs> ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? It's like, do you love, do you cherish, will you honor this person for the rest of your life? Yes. Good. Sign here, 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 initial here. Give me a blood test and two witnesses. Let's do this thing. It's a ridiculous proposition. It's ridiculous. Uh, most of you guys can tell I'm divorced from. <laughs> uh, I'm happily divorced for 12 years now. And just so everybody knows, it takes about 12 years for you to stop hating that person. So, at this point, she is a lovely person. Uh, I barely have to talk to her. <laughs> She's awesome. Uh, we do have a little child together, though, so that's fun. Uh, I don't really talk about this much, because it's weird to me. Uh, I do, and they live in the Bible Belt, and that's always weird for me, being an atheist. Because uh, I, I go back to visit them, but it's just it's a weird place. Like, uh, we went to this child uh, nutritionist the last time I went back, and this is odd for the Bible Belt, uh, we're in there and she's trying to explain the habits of overeating. And she goes, overeating is a lot like taking cocaine. All right, to my 12-year-old. <laughs> the first time you take it, you only need a little bump. Then you need more and more. I'm like, bitch, do you need a hit? What's up? <laughs> can, can we use a better example for children? Like, I don't know, candy. <laughs> And then her mom says to me, hey, Amber, tell your dad what you're doing this weekend. And she goes, oh, mommy's dropping me off at this weird guy's house for a sleepover. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on with mom? And she goes, no, no, it's for their church. They're going over to their preacher's house. And I'm like, I'm atheist. Do you think that matters? <laughs> yeah, preachers aren't known to mess with little kids. <laughs> Can we grow a little common sense? Oh, it's ridiculous. I do. I hate Tulsa. I hate it with a passion. <laughs> Have you guys seen that movie, uh, Leaves of Green, Fields of Green, Fields of Leaves, something? <laughs> Some stupid movie based in Tulsa. And I should even know that a movie based in Tulsa wouldn't have a happy ending. It's, it's a ridiculous movie. Uh, nobody's seen it. It's fine. <laughs> they made me watch it. It was like a requirement or some bullshit. I hated it. Uh, so let's get to the science shit, shall we? Uh, so there's this theory out there that every decision you make, somewhere in a parallel universe, another you makes that opposite decision. Well, as a comedian, I've decided to fuck around with this other guy. <laughs> Just in case it's true. For example, today, I decided not to drown myself. <laughs> in another universe, that joke didn't work. <laughs> Good stuff. I do, I like science. You know what I like about science? Our miracles are better, honestly. <laughs> like a couple weeks ago, they figured out how to reprogram T-cells to uh, cure cancer, which is awesome and nobody knows about it, which is weird. <laughs> Anybody know about that? No, see? <laughs> fucking cure cancer, nobody knows. It's fucking weird. <laughs> anyway, uh, but in, in religion, what you get is toast. And that is, like, some guy's face on toast. Oh, my toast. 
That's Jesus on my toast. My question, how do you know that's Jesus? That could be any asshole with a beard. You know? That could be Santa Claus toast. You don't know. That's, that's, eat your toast and shut up. That's what I'm saying. Science made your toast, so shut up. Our miracles are better. We got the large hedgehog slide. It's awesome. Yeah, science people, that's why I love you guys. Even though love is a fake thing. It's just love. It's <laughs> uh, science is great. Uh, you know I like science? Because uh, I'm not going to say every religious person is racist, but if you show me a racist person, uh, I'll show you a religious one. <laughs> just saying. Science doesn't care about race. Actually, to the scientists, race doesn't really even exist. Because I have this freckle right here, and this freckle has as much melanin in it that you have in you, sir. I'm glad you were sitting there, by the way. <laughs> but it's true. It's totally true. And if you add up all my freckles, I happen to be about 12% black. <laughs> so you guys know. Which is good for you ladies. Now you can go black, still 88% chance of getting back. <laughs> and a math joke. <laughs> in one. They said it couldn't be done. I did it. <laughs> uh, religion is just so weird to me. And the problem is, I, I ask questions and they hate that. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, I don't think God's a man. Everybody thinks God is this dude. I think if there is a God, it's gotta be a woman. It has to be. Because she gave me free will and then she gets pissed off how I use it. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> I use it the way I want. <laughs> no, it's, it's gotta be a woman, you know? All powerful, all knowing. Every week you go to church, she needs more money. <laughs> Always with. You never get to skip a week in church. That's what I don't get. It's like, oh no, we got enough money last week, guys. We'll just. You guys are cool this week. It's a pass. That never happens. I saw a church with an ATM on it. Like, ATM inside. Woo! And then I saw a Catholic church that had a neon sign that said, Live, nude, boys, boys, boys. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Weird thing is, they get mad about that, but it's been happening since like the 80s. You know, once you make it stop happening, I'll stop joking about it. <laughs> That's that easy. Stop oh, fucking with kids, you dirty people. <laughs> it's gross. It is gross. I think uh, if I had to pick a religion, Jewish would be my favorite religion. And, and just mainly going back to the fact that rabbis don't mess with little boys. I, mean, I have high standards for my religion. <laughs> I'm not saying the rabbis don't want to. But the first time they make the guy pull it out, they cut off the tip. We ain't gonna pull it out again. <laughs> Come on, guys. We're not that stupid. <laughs> we need to conserve as much as we got. Especially if you're Jewish. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I was in Hollywood. <laughs> Sorry, I said you were my favorite. <laughs> uh, I don't get the whole heaven and hell thing. That confuses me. Uh, like, let's say I die right now, which would be awkward. Uh, be awkward. I assume I go up to the Christian heaven because I'm white. I'm not really sure how that works out. It would be weird if I got up there and there were 72 virgins. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, wait a minute, I'm not a Muslim. You know, never mind. I'm here, screw it. <laughs> well, let's say I go up to the Christian heaven. You know, I'm up there in the long line, you got the pearly gates there, St. Peter's checking people in. First of all, never been in a long line and thought, oh yeah, <laughs> this is heaven. <laughs> now I see why everybody comes to the DMV. This is great. <laughs> and you got St. Peter checking people in. I remember hearing about 11 other apostles. Can we open up another teller? Get the shit going on? <laughs> Two lines, maybe? This is Christ. Can I see a supervisor? Oh, wait. That is a And then you got the pearly gates. Why, why is heaven a gated community? I don't get it. I mean, I understand a lot of rich white people live there, but come on. Are there like wolves running around? What's going on with that? Is somebody gonna come by like, quick, behind the gates, the Jews are coming. I don't, I don't get that. It's such a weird, the Jews are, I don't know. It's like Paul Revere of heaven. 
Uh, unless Sarah Palin is telling the story, then it's all different. <laughs> and I'm not one of those people that come out and is just going to say Sarah Palin's retarded, because that's ridiculous. But she's at least a carrier. We can all agree on that. <laughs> Genetically speaking. <laughs> Alright, sorry, back to heaven. I don't know how to train it up. <laughs> so you get up in there and, and then you get into heaven and they say the streets are paved in gold. Now, scientifically, that is a horrible material to be paved in streets with. <laughs> you are going to get potholes. <laughs> That's going to look awkward in heaven. Why are there even streets in heaven? I don't care. Are there like cars rolling around? I mean, we get wings. What do I need a car for? There's fly everywhere. Oh, and 7 Eleven. <laughs> Oh, they have streets? I think they have streets so that they have some place to put the mansions, because everybody gets a mansion. Now, I may be atheist, but I'm not greedy. I don't need a mansion. It's not the size of my house that pisses me off, it's the amount of rent I pay every month. You know what I mean? I'll give me a shitty one bedroom apartment for free, that's heavy. I don't see why there are houses. Are there like hurricanes in heaven? I don't see. Wait, take shelter. Hurricane Jews coming. I don't get it. Being a little hard on the Jews there, aren't I? I think they've been through enough, Will. <laughs> uh, I don't get hell either, and that's probably where I'm going. Uh, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't believe in it, so people tell me, you're going to hell, and I'm like, well, you're going to Never Never Land. <laughs> like that Bill Captain Hook I said hi. <laughs> I like in cartoons and stuff when you see it. When somebody goes to hell, a trap door opens up, they drop right in. That's where the line should be. I don't know if you got your signals crossed or anything. That's all it should be, one giant line. That pissed me off. And then you get down there because you're an evil dude and the devil starts torturing you. I would be like, hey buddy, what's going on? Same team. You know what I'm saying? You're giving out high fives and shit, but you're probably. What's going on here? Does this mean I'm not able to go to Hitler's party? This is <laughs> Which is weird. Because if hell exists, that means Hitler and the Jews are both down there. And so that's gotta get weird. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Nobody thinks about these things. It's just awkward. Alright, I'm gonna end on this, guys. Uh, a couple little movie ideas I have, because I'm in Hollywood, and I don't think there's enough science movies out there. So here's a few for you. Uh, one, a group of scientists. Really? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right. They get captured and taken as slaves. I'm going to call it Square Roots. Alright, there's this scientist, right? He pisses off the mob and he has to try and run from them cross country. I'm going to call it the Road to Edition. <laughs> They're all pretty much like this. Just like, <laughs> they don't get better. Uh, all right. uh, a giant mutated scientist comes up and he starts destroying a city. I'm gonna call it Cleverfield. <laughs> all right, that one's stupid. I'll give you that. That's fine. All right, uh, one more. Uh, no, two more. Two more. Uh, a group of scientists. They live in the backwoods of a nuclear waste dump. I'm gonna call it the Hills Have IQs. <laughs> All right, this one doesn't have to do with scientists. It's just a little fun one. It's a parody of that uh, old movie, Honey, I Blew Up the Kids. Well, I'm gonna set it in the Mideast. It's gonna be a much shorter, sadder movie. Oh <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for coming up. Yeah. yeah.